So I'm going to respond to a comment. This was on a video I published related to reincarnation and someone asked, do we choose our forms? Of course, I should preface any discussion on a topic like this by just being very open and saying, who knows? <laughs> What I can do is speculate, right? Based on things I know, based on observations I've made, based on my own reasoning, um, based on what seems to make the most sense to me, based on what's internally coherent or whatever, I can kind of speculate. I'm going to give you my opinion. Right. Let me just be real about the fact that that's what I'm doing. I'm giving you my opinion. So try on these ideas. See if they seem to have explanatory value. Um, see if they make sense to you, basically. I would say we do choose our forms. And she's asking the question, as it pertains to future incarnations. Basically, do we in some way choose the conditions of our next life? <clears throat> when it comes to reincarnation and topics like karma, of course, a lot of people think in terms of reward and punishment, right? Probably the most popular mainstream conception of reincarnation and karma is something like, oh, you're a good person in one life, so in the next life, you know, things are good for you. Okay, uh, you're a bad person in the next life. Things are bad for you, you're being punished, or I don't know, like if you have some kind of karmic debt with someone, you reincarnate into some situation where you can resolve that. There may be a certain amount of truth to that. <clears throat> but what would be the ultimate purpose served by that? I think... Um, Either existence and the evolution of souls and reincarnation and all this is teleological, or it's completely meaningless. If it's meaningless, there's no point talking about it anyway, just, just so that the conversation is even worth having. Let's presuppose that it is meaningful, it is teleological. <clears throat> I've made it pretty clear in the past that my position is basically that the purpose of existence is basically for souls to fully actualize, for individuals to realize their true self, their true will, and to merge with the divine, or really to recognize that this sense of separation and alienation from the divine which they experience is and always has been an illusion, right? So it's like a waking up. You wake up, you're who you are. You don't, your dreaming self doesn't merge with your true self. It's just you wake up, oh, this is who I've always been. It was all a dream. It was all an illusion. I thought I was someone else. Now I've returned, returned to myself. And I think that everything in the dream in some way serves to return you to your true self. Um, I, I mean, there's all kind of different theories about dreams. I think the one thing that's absolutely undeniable is that you are the one generating the dream. Right? You can say it's your unconscious mind, but that's a part of you. So, whoever you dream yourself to be in the next dream that you have, do you choose your form? Yes, of course you do. Why? 
Is it to punish yourself or reward yourself? Maybe in a sense. I mean, you might, your, your unconscious mind might generate a particular dream out of a sense of unconscious guilt or something like that. You're, you Maybe you do sort of punish yourself in a dream. Maybe you do sort of punish yourself in a particular incarnation, you know? Maybe you sort of reward yourself. I mean, Sigmund Freud obviously thought that a lot of dreaming had to do with wish fulfillment. So, I mean, maybe your incarnations have something to do with a kind of wish fulfillment, you know? <clears throat> There's something you haven't really experienced yet in your evolutionary cycle. And it's like you're not quite ready to liberate yourself from this wheel of samsara until you've experienced like a, a menage a trois or something. I don't know. Whatever it is, it's like wish fulfillment. It's like, okay, I have to hit this bucket list. I, again, I'm kind of speculating a little bit here, but... <clears throat> I think there's something deeper and more profound than that. So I think that's an element of dreaming, and I think that's probably an element of our incarnation cycles. But I think there's there's deeper aspects. So in a dream, it seems to me that one of the purposes of dreams is to bring unconscious content into conscious awareness. You're not quite ready to face it and integrate it yet, perhaps, and so it's presented to you symbolically, metaphorically, right? You're not quite ready to see certain repressed aspects of your own psyche as they are yet. So they're presented to you in kind of absurd and terrifying forms. I think that's where nightmares come from to a certain degree. And I think that's part of the explanation for suffering and evil in the world. Because there is, or, or there are certain aspects of the true self that you as an individual or humanity as a whole or whatever are not quite prepared to consciously integrate and so they manifest in absurd and terrifying forms and so the world we inhabit appears to be absurd and terrifying at times is a stage But as we continue to do the work um, necessary to our evolution, we become more and more receptive vessels. We become more and more prepared to see truth. And so things are presented in plainer and plainer symbols more and more obvious metaphors, if that makes sense. And I think that is how repressed content emerges into consciousness, whether in dreams as the microcosm or in a larger sense, just like in the cosmos through this uh, divine play that we're all a part of. <clears throat> this grand dream of God. But to return to the question more specifically, do you choose your form? To answer it by way of analogy, going back to the dream metaphor, do you choose your next dream form? Because, like, sometimes in a dream, you dream that you're you. Maybe it's a different version of you. Sometimes you dream you're someone else or something else. I mean, I've dreamed that I'm Batman. I've dreamed that I was a woman. I've dreamed all kind of absurd things. I've inhabited all kinds of different dream characters, right? 
there's no denying that it is ultimately me who chooses um, what sort of character or form I inhabit and identify with in a dream, of course. And in the same way, yes, I do believe that you choose your next incarnation. You just have to understand what I mean by you. Let's say that you're having a dream right now, and you're dreaming that you are, like, I don't know, whatever. That character that you are currently experiencing and identifying yourself with, that character, that false self, is not the author of the next dream that you're going to experience, but you as the dreamer are. When you understand that you are a manifestation of the one self, and that this one self is the one that's generating everything, that's doing everything, albeit perhaps unconsciously, that is my view. <clears throat> then to the extent that you realize your identity as the one self, you can take responsibility for the form that you've chosen to inhabit in this life. And the conditions of this present incarnation that you've chosen to experience. And the ultimate purpose, I believe, is to allow you to more clearly perceive your true self. To allow you to more perfectly know your true self. To become who you are. And it might be pleasant experiences or unpleasant experiences that best facilitate that. Let's say on your soul's evolutionary journey, you have evolved and developed tremendously except in one regard, right? You have all kinds of, um, you know, virtues and so on, but you haven't developed courage, right? You're a little bit of a coward. Your next lifetime is undoubtedly going to be structured such that everything in your field of experience Uh, let's just put it this way, grant you opportunities to exercise courage. Because courage is one of the virtues, that is one of the attributes of your true self, whether you know it yet or not. To the extent that you are living in fear, to the extent that you're a coward, to the extent that you haven't um, developed courage, you're separated from your true self, right? You could say the same of temperance and other things. That's just one example. I personally think that one of the purposes of my present incarnation is to teach me humility. It's to show me how uh, weak I really am. It's to show me how insufficient uh, my own intellect, my own will, my own 
talents, whatever, are on their own. Um, it, it seems like everything in my life is is kind of set me up to not even so much fail, but to have successes that go nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you don't know what I'm saying, because that's, that's my own personal journey. But it's like, um, and I don't know how much I want to really go into that, but um, think about the patterns, the cycles in your own life, this present incarnation for you. Try to identify what the themes are. What are the things that are like constantly poking you in the forehead or whatever? You know what I'm saying? Um, what is the lesson that you seem to be repeatedly presented with over and over again that maybe you haven't quite gotten yet? And then understand that you came into this life because you, I mean, your true innermost self recognized that that is the lesson that you most needed to learn in order to progress toward the next stage in your own personal evolution toward Godhood. And then accept that no matter how unpleasant it is and dedicate yourself to mastering that lesson. You chose this. You're the one doing all of this. You're not being punished, per se. You might be punishing yourself. And of course, punishment and reward is how we shape behavior, right? You know, so... Punishing yourself kind of gets a bad rap in pop psychology, but maybe there's a reason why... Uh, you, your true innermost self, really feels like you need to be punished for a while in order to change certain behavioral patterns that may have persisted even across several lifetimes. Let's see, is there anything more to say on this? There's always more to say. But I think that's kind of a good introduction to the question and the answer or the kind of answer that I propose as uh, or in response to the question. So I guess I'll just use that as kind of an opening gambit. Maybe there will be more questions and I'll delve further into things depending on, on which particular direction people want to go uh, with it. Uh, you know, I don't mind sharing some other thoughts. Let me leave it there for now. Um, thanks for listening. Peace.